Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Evening Chapel on April 26, 2020. I'm glad uh, to be with you in this way. Hope you've had a good weekend and that our time together here tonight helps get the new week off to a good start. Uh, I said last week that I want to spend some time with these welcomes talking about some Ashburn Chapel and Brooks School history and all the names and initials that adorn this beautiful building that we're in so frequently over the course of a normal school year. And tonight I'm going to say a little bit about Richard Spofford Russell, who is remembered in two places in the building itself. One is right here with these initials RSR, which I know all of us walk by all the time and we've thought to ourselves, what do those initials stand for? Well, they stand for Richard Spofford Russell. And then Mr. Russell is also remembered on a plaque above the steps going to the lower level, which you can see right here. And it reads, in loving and grateful memory of Richard Spofford Russell, who lived from 1880 to 1966, original trustee and treasurer 1926 to 1951, trustee emeritus 1951 to 1966, founder, friend, and benefactor. Uh, Russell House, which will come as no surprise, was his summer home, and the first 60 acres of land given to the school came from Mr. Russell. There's a beautiful painting of him in Wilder Dining Hall that we can take a closer look at when we're all back here together. And there also is the Russell Prize, which will go this year to a deserving sixth former as we finish the year. So there's an awful lot uh, that we owe uh, Mr. Russell, who really was as critical to Brooks School's beginning as just about anyone and, and has built, helped build, over the school's first quarter century of life, uh, so much of what we have come to enjoy year over year in our now 93 years of life. So tonight, I'm grateful for Mr. Russell, for what he has allowed me to draw from my life at Brooks and remind all of us that so much of what we enjoy together has come from those who preceded us and those who cared for the school in ways that Mr. Russell did, and that we now are the stewards of this incredible school and incredible community. We continue to miss you terribly here on campus. We wish you well as the week gets moving. We'll continue to be in touch, and we'll continue to do the great job we're doing day after day in this challenging time. Take care, be well, and have a great week. Our opening hymn will be Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire. Mr. Humphreyville will play it on the chapel organ. You and your family are invited to sing along. The words will appear on the screen.
first reading is from G.K. Chesterton, a British writer and philosopher of the early 20th century. Tradition means giving votes to the most obscure of all classes, our ancestors. It is the democracy of the dead. Tradition refuses to submit to the small and arrogant oligarchy of those who merely happen to be walking about. The second reading is Syed Hoysin Nasir, a professor of Islamic studies at George Washington University. Look at yourself. You are the same person since you were born. During the years of your life, all the cells of your body have changed, but you are still you. Even though you are living in time and space, so it is with tradition. The third reading is from Maya Angelou. Laugh as much as possible, always laugh. It's the sweetest thing one can do for oneself and one's fellow human beings. I don't trust anyone who doesn't laugh. Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and healthy. The first two of our readings today are about tradition, and the third one is about keeping a sense of humor. I've been thinking about tradition because I believe this weekend would have been prom weekend if we weren't all socially distanced from one another. I'm thinking about the prom and other Brooks traditions, some of which won't be happening this spring, at least in the usual way. And what about the pranks? Who's going to steal the clapper from the chapel bell? You know, it's easy to look down on traditions, to think of them as stupid old habits that get in the way of our freedom of doing things the way we want to. I ran across a quote this week from someone who said, tradition is a foolish man's excuse for not thinking. And I've run across a lot of people in my life who have that attitude, attitude about religion. They tell me it's just stupid old tradition. But there's another point of view I like to think about, and I ran across another quote this week from someone who said, we are our culture and tradition. If there is no culture or tradition, we are no one. And when you really think about it, almost everything we are and everything we do is in some way tradition, in the sense that it's something we've learned from those who came before us. Our language, our behavior and manners, our education, our hopes and aspirations, almost all of that is stuff we've learned from others. So it's tradition in a way. In these days, we're cut off from a lot of our normal life. We're distanced from the things we usually do and the ways we do them. We're distanced from our tradition, including the traditional things that happen at Brooks in the spring. This experience of being closed away from the world is making me think a lot more about tradition and about how much of what I value in life is the things I often do most routinely without thinking much about them. Things I do because they're traditions. I miss being at Brooks. I miss saying hi to all of you on Main Street. I miss being in chapel. I miss how my heart swells up with joy when I see you all coming into the chapel. That's become a tradition for me. I love being part of the Brooks community and being separated, separated from it makes me treasure it more than ever. And I expect and hope that that's the same for you. Now, I don't wanna be overly serious today, so I wanna end this with a little bit of humor. As most of you know, one of my favorite Brooks traditions is giving Endicott Peabody's nose a rub for good luck. So in honor of that, I've taken the liberty of composing a new poem on the subject of Endicott Peabody's nose. I hope you'll enjoy it. Oh, dearest old Endicott, Reverend Peabody, we're sorry that some of your glories turned shoddy. You used to grant A's on exams of mathematics and bolster our speeches with voices emphatic. You conquered our foes on the pitches of soccer. You rocked with our jazz band and rolled with our rockers. You swelled up our actors with thespian talent. Our dancers you graced with good, you, our dancers you favored with grace and good balance. On water, our rowers reached cadence unheard of and everywhere 
Brook School was spoken good word of. And all of these wonders, as everyone knows, we achieved just by giving a pat on your nose. But now your great nose, your schnazola exalted, is socially distanced. Though you can't be faulted, the wonders your nose works by means of a pat we cannot obtain now, because Brooks, we're not at. Our sports fields are empty, our dorms are asleep, no teachers their watch on our kissing do keep. The tutors we love are on screens two-dimensional, making the best of our day unconventional. And all our spring pranks and our fun celebrations we've lost in protecting the health of our nation. We think that in view of these troubles so grueling, you ought to ease up on your nose-touching ruling. We think that as long as we're socially distant, a virtual nose touch should be quite sufficient. We'll reach for your nose and imagine it's there, and you'll work your magic. Now, isn't that fair? Please do consider our needy condition, and in your great kindness, relax the tradition. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Our closing hymn is the school hymn. Mr. Humphrey Bull will play the song on the chapel organ. You and your family are invited to sing along. The words will appear on the screen. invite you to join me in prayer. Great Spirit of love, be present with us and hold us together in our hearts, even though we are distant from one another. In this time of change and uncertainty, give us an appreciation of the enduring gifts of culture and tradition and faith that have come down to us from those who came before us. Turn us away from pride and self-centeredness. Give us the wisdom to be able to laugh at ourselves and to share our humor with one another. Open our hearts to the needs of those around us and give us the will to serve others as you have served us. Amen. <laughs>